Hello, my name is Don Ford, Senior Training Manager for Heat Rock Refrigeration. With me today, I have Robert Thornton, who is one of our tech support specialists. We're going to be discussing the E6 and the E16 error codes and how things might manifest themselves as the technicians see these in the field. Things to look for. First of all, low superheat can be detrimental to any refrigeration system. You'll have liquid flood back or oil wash that could kill any refrigeration system. So with our electronic boards and getting these handy low superheat error codes, it really protects our equipment in an effort to shut it down before any further damage can happen. Yeah. We're going to cover the basics. Uh, is your refrigerant selection correct? Is your voltage correct? is your suction sensor and transducers in calibration. You could possibly have a board in a bad EEV. There we can rule those out and we will show you how to do the test on those two. Right, and so let's go inside the box and see where these points can be measured. One of the subjects we just now mentioned was, is your refrigerant correct? It is simple to get there by hitting your program review button two times and you'll see REF selected. This one is selected for 404A. There are many selections on this board for just about all refrigerants used today. You can go back to the main screen by hitting the clear test button and you can go directly from there to the monitor. The next thing we mentioned was is our voltage on the system correct? Our monitor button tells us many things. We hit our monitor button 10 times until we see the letters AC. Give it two seconds, it will flash up what the actual voltage being fed from the transformer is. In this case, this one is 25.8, perfect. You want it to be between 25 and 29 volts. Hit clear test to go back to the main screen. Now we can go to our suction sensor to see if it's the proper calibration. It is listed as SCT, suction temperature. Now we are in a non-refrigerated box right now, so this is actually showing the box temperature, but this one is correct. If you want to compare this temperature that's shown to your clamp-on thermometer that you put on the suction line, then that's how you're going to check the accuracy of it. You can also take your sensor and unplug it from the board and just take your, uh, take your ohm meter and if you want to put your sensor in your uh, end of the sensor into ice cold water, an ice bath, it should ohm at 32,650 ohms at 32 degree water. Uh, the next one is our suction transducer, and this could be SCP under monitor. And that's going to show you what your actual suction pressure is. In this case, our system is not running, so our pressures are equalized, and our suction pressure is showing 135 PSI. But you can put your gauge on your refrigeration system, compare your gauge to the display on the board. We can hit our clear test button to always go back to the main uh, screen. Now there's a way to check our, our board and our EEV if you are a suspect that one of them is bad. The board should have an output to the valve of approximately 18 to 34 volts. If it is suspect that you have a bad board or a bad EEV, the test is the same to check both of them. Very simple on the QRC or the beacon board. You first have to place the board into the test mode. You can only get to the test mode from the off mode. So if you are currently in defrost or the cool mode and it's not in off, it's very simple to unplug the power from the board on the lower right hand spade connector. 
Wait till the LED lights go out. Plug power back in. It will take a second for it to recalibrate. Then it goes to the off mode. Then simply go to the clear test button. It will display TST for test. And every 15 seconds, it will give you a voltage reading between 18 and, 30, 18 and 34 volts. And if you are getting the 18 to 34 volts, your board is good. So every 15 seconds, after your test leads are inserted into the Molex connector on the top, you slide your test leads over the white and yellow wire. Then after you get the voltage reading on that, go to the bottom two, which is a different positioning uh, place for the winding. So you want to make sure that top and bottom both give you the 18 to 34 volts. If you establish that you do have the proper voltage, then it's probably your valve. It's a very good possibility that your valve power head is the culprit and not the valve. So we don't want to have to unbraze if we don't have to. You can go to your manual and it will show this to you in a little bit better detail, but you have a terminal A and B. The volt, the uh, ohms between those two should be 150 ohms. You also have C and D. The ohms between those two should be 150 ohms. That's plus or minus 10%. If you are getting that proper ohm reading, then it's just your power head that's the culprit. When you receive your new valve, then all you have to do is replace the power head. But if they do not show proper, you will have to put in a new valve and unbraze the old. The test mode stays in effect for 45 seconds. And if you haven't performed your test thoroughly all the way through in that 45 seconds, you can simply hit the test clear test button again. It will come out of test by itself in 45 seconds. I will briefly cover how to get to the same set points on the Intelligent Controller. Always get to the main screen by pressing the home button. Once you're there, the first word that comes up is monitor, and that would be your monitor screen if you need to select anything to see what's in the monitor menu. You can go to these menus in your INO manual for further descriptions. Where we want to go first, we talked about the correct refrigerant charge. We want to go to our box settings menu, press enter. You can scroll over to your refrigerant. This one's set for 404A. If it needs to be changed, you'll just press the enter button and it allows you to scroll through all the different refrigerants. Once you get to the desired refrigerant, press the enter button. Now we want to go back to our home menu because we want to check our voltage. Our voltage, our suction sensor, and our transducer uh, can all be checked from the monitor menu. So we'll hit, we'll get to the monitor by going to home, make sure we're on monitor, press the button, and we're going to check our voltage. There you have board voltage is showing 26.64. If it is not, you can do the same thing as we did in the, in the beacon of the QRC. Simply go to the transformer and change the tap on the transformer, unless there's another power problem. Next, we, while we're in the monitor menu, we might as well just go ahead and stay here, or we can just start all over again. Press the monitor button. The next thing we want to check is our uh, suction sensor and transducer to see if our suction temperature sensor is good and our transducer is good. Suction temperature is 77. Like I say, this is a test box. It's not down to temperature, but that is correct. You can also put your clamp-on thermometer on your suction line to compare this temperature to your clamp-on uh, temperature. You can also put your sensors. These are the same sensors that we use in Beacon and QRC. You can put them in a cup of ice water. They'll measure uh, 32,600 ohms, or you can refer to the chart in the INO manual that shows you what the ohm values are for different temperatures. Suction pressure, 
Again, this one's equalized, but you can do the same thing. You can put your gauge on, just like you did on the Beacon and QRC. Compare this suction pressure to your gauge to make sure it's good. They should not be more than five PSI difference. To check the board in the EEV, it's very similar to the way we did it on QRC and Beacon. Uh, we need to put it into the test mode and you get there through the manual menu. Press the enter button. We go to the test mode. Execute the test mode. This is a test board. Normally your expert pin is 99999 and your basic pin is 88888. This one just allow me to blow through it because it's being used as test. It says test mode, ex execute. And it's going to go through all of the different functions that the system does. It's going to turn the compressor off and on, the heaters off and on, you'll see the fans turn off and on, everything, including your EEV. So put your AC voltmeter in the same location that we had on the QRC and beacon board. And while it's in the test mode, you will wait till it gets to EEV. And it takes a, a little bit longer than it did on the QRC beacon board, but it will eventually get to uh, EEV test. And once it gets there, make sure your voltmeter is in place. As I said, you're gonna cycle through all the different motions. It will stay on a few seconds. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing on this because it does take a few minutes to go through the whole cycle. But have your voltmeter in place, make sure you're getting the same 18 to 34 volts. And if you are, then you know your board is good and it's gonna be in your valve. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to just replace the power head as we showed you how to check those on values uh, just a while ago. This will also come out of uh, test mode automatically. So now to recap, we checked our voltage to see if it was correct on the inputs for the PCB board. We checked the suction, suction sensor, the suction transducer. We checked to see whether the board was bad or not. And then we checked the EEB. Uh, what else are we missing, Robert? Very important when you get to the job site to make sure that your condensing unit is running. A lot of people will look at the board and see low superheat and expect it's gonna be one of the symptoms we've already gone through, but in fact, if, you're, if your condensing unit is not running, you don't have any superheat, so the board thinks the low superheat is bad or is low, and it's gonna start shutting down your valve and the system will not run. You also wanna check when you get into your evaporator that your valve harness is plugged in properly to the power head. If you read the word Corel, the gray wire in the harness should always go in the direction of the L. If you do that, it plugs on very easily. It doesn't matter what system you have, whether it be a reach-in unit cooler or a very large unit cooler, the size of the valves may be different, but the valve plugs in the same. Also, check where your harness plugs into your board that the pins are all in their sockets, the spade connectors and the wires are in there securely, and also you want to unplug it just to make sure that the pins that they push into are not bent. And that's about all they need to check. All right. We hope this was helpful for the E6 and E16 error codes. Thank you.